really all. You can see we were married uh, 50 years, met in junior high, actually. His whole life was really about his family. Family was everything. Well, sometimes when um, me and my cousin, whenever we made a joke or something, he would always laugh until he cried. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> we talked about the uh, donor thing when we did the trust, but we had already spoken about that. We just at that time thought, well, um, what could we give, you know? I mean, we're, we're old now, but we were so surprised, or I was surprised when I received the phone call that they had taken that in the cornea. It was just left me breathless. I went, wow, and I, I, I'm so happy we did that. Well, it makes me feel better knowing that he could help someone even after he was gone. Hopefully, the word spreads and more people will sign up. I always used to think it was supposed to be for young people, but I'll be 70 and, and I'm on the donor list. If corneas is nothing, you know, I could give that in a heartbeat. He was our uncle and he was, he was a really great guy. He was amazing. He was like, our second dad, almost. He would definitely go out of his way to help people, so I think that knowing that he saved someone would be, like, really big for him. Makes me feel really good. I feel like that's something that he would want to do with his, you know, at, at the end of his life. He was a really, really great guy, and yes, we miss him a lot, but just to know that like that he's helping people even though we don't have him anymore is really, it's really great. It touches my heart. When we found out that Christopher needed a heart transplant, it was an incidental finding. He was diagnosed with asthmatic bronchitis first. Um, after a follow-up visit, the doctor did an x-ray and um, he said Christopher's heart was enlarged. So he says he needs a heart to live. And to digest that and to grasp the heart transplant is not easy. It was scary to know that his life depends on somebody else. It was four months and the doctor said, this is it, you have to take him home and say goodbye. You have to make sure you cherish those moments. I was bathing Christopher in the kitchen sink when the phone rang and it was Lamanda. Are you ready? Do you have your, your luggage ready? And she says, it's time. So at that moment, there's no words to explain anything. You are excited for one, but then sad for the other. I couldn't stop thinking about that donor family and what they've, what they've gone through, what happened. He was three months older than Chris. He loved to dance. His donor is Hispanic from Guatemala. His mom assured me, and we, we spoke twice, and she said, don't feel bad for what happened. I'm glad that my son lives through your son. She's a very strong woman, and I'm forever grateful for that. I know that, like a little boy, um, gave his heart to me so I can live and play with my brothers. I was a little bit nervous because my family wasn't with me when I got the, when I got my new heart, and and then once I got the new heart, I felt better. Christopher was past 15 months, and he wouldn't walk, and he wouldn't sit on his own. So seeing him now is a blessing. He can run, he can play, he's a normal kid. He's constantly on the go, he constantly has us on our toes. So it definitely has changed his life for the best. The organ donation is a great thing to help people if they're like um, sick and stuff. Other people can help them by giving their hearts to, to the people that are dying to save their lives. I'm here to honor John Ford, my husband of 16 years. John was a lot of fun, always with a smile. Um, Mrs. Ford, I got this. Always kind, always gentle. My favorite thing with John was, was I'd come out here from Ontario and egg him about his barbecue not being the best. <laughs> and then he would have to prove me wrong. I love the fact that he was a Raider fan, just like I was. I am <laughs> a diehard Raider fan. He was <laughs> my neighbor, and he was always smiling and waving. I never heard him say a bad thing about anybody, and he always had a great smile. And if I was in a bad mood, just being around him would uh, change my mood. 
He wasn't sick or anything. He had the usual stuff when you get older. He had just gotten with diabetes and high blood pressure, but he was not sick. No warning, but he didn't suffer, so I guess I'm thankful for that. But I thank you guys so much because I received three or four calls thanking us for doing what he did. The organization is awesome. Not having John has really, really been hard for me this last year, but knowing that he's still alive and he's still doing good things and he's still not here, but there are people here that's able to, to carry on with some of the parts that he's given him or shared part of him. I'm very proud, proud of what John was able to do. Very supportive of what his call was. That's, that's the type of person he is. She liked to play. She, we rarely heard her cry, unless she was hungry, <laughs> which is normal. But other than that, she, yeah, she was all in all, happy baby, silly. She was about to be six months, um, equipped at SITS. It was a difficult decision, but then we figured, you know, why not help another life? Why not help somebody who could benefit off of, you know, what, instead of just letting it go. We love her and we miss her and she'll always be in our hearts. Loud, <laughs> outspoken, full of wife, just a best friend, great offense. Just a really good guy, a very kind heart. He asphyxiated as he was having a seizure and lost all air and oxygen to his brain. And I know they donated his heart and they had a couple other things. It wasn't that hard of a decision actually to know that he was so young and he was healthy that a lot of it could help another life. Just, you know, hoping one day if we ever in that position that somebody can do the same for us. That a piece of him still lives on. Piece of life. I'm proud, makes me happy, like hoping that they get a piece of just his heart, his, his character. Like there's so much good about him that, that hopefully it lives on. I miss him and I love him, and it's been hard, but this has made it a little bit easier. We've all changed our IDs to register donors just because one day, you know, it's karma, our circle of life, you know, we may need it. One of us may need it, and if not, maybe we can be a blessing to somebody else. Long-term use of uh, blood pressure medications, uh, which, you know, it works for one thing, but eventually, long term, we'll do something else. And my kidneys did die. We knew it was going to happen ahead of time, so we prepared ourselves for it. While I was on dialysis and waiting, it was constantly keeping myself in the best health I could. It was difficult. For, it was very scary. I remember the first time I got hooked up, it was like, wow, how long is this going to be? By the end of my dialysis uh, usage, uh, I was getting pretty tired and pretty sick. I'd lost weight. and. It was difficult, but you know, I just kept the faith that something's gonna happen eventually, and lo and behold, I was only on dialysis for 10 months, uh, and then the call for the kidney came. All I know about my donor is that she was 17 years old, and she was killed tragically by a gunshot wound to the head. I've written a letter, but I've never had a response back. I said, thank you for loving that person so much that in your loss, uh, that you've decided to share her with me, and I promised to take care of her the best that I could. My life is very different. Now, after the transplant, I could continue my craft, which is flowers. I could go hiking again and all kinds of things. Like life, life was back to normal, thankfully. When we go, we want to leave a legacy. Um, and most legacies are left by the amount of money that you leave. Well, most of us can't do that. So I, I, I would tell someone who is going to donate would be, you will never be forgotten. People will speak about your loved one all the time. So that's the legacy that they will leave. Joshua, he was, he was a mama's boy for sure. <laughs> a major mama's boy. Um, just such a sweet, kind-hearted person. Um, full of compassion and love and so giving. He was just the light of the family. He was 22 and he was going through a very emotional time. He was um, high on marijuana 
and had been drinking and he had taken painkillers for his arthritis. And um, he was going through a big fight with his girlfriend. He picked up a gun and um, they went off. When the doctors came, they came in the room while Joshua was laying, lying there and the monitors are on and we could hear his heartbeat. And we see, you know, to us, he's, he's good. He's, he's going to pull through this some way, some way somehow. But they used Joshua's name. That's what touched me more than anything. And when they were explaining to me about his organs and everything, how vital they are, you know, and how young he is, I started thinking, you know what? Joshua is, he is such a giving person. He would give the shirt off his back. I mean, he gave and gave and gave and gave. He was able to donate his liver and his kidneys. I knew that if he was there or if he could have made the choice or something, he would have, because that's just how he lived. So I knew, you know, by giving and donating and making a decision, that would be honoring him. We do know the one that received one organ. Um, it was around Christmas time. <laughs> and there, from what we were, we learned that their family was actually getting ready to say their goodbyes because their family member wasn't gonna make it to see Christmas. And then they received the news, wait, we have an organ. Knowing that it was Joshua's. And I was like, oh, my son, you're so awesome. You are a superhero. more I learned about it, and then I became an organ donor <laughs> through that, and his dad became an organ donor, and his friends, some of his friends have, they when they come, they become organ donors. Just take some time and just look really deep within yourself and just really think about it because you can't take them with you. Why let that part of you that's life in you just rot away when you can actually help someone else to continue living. <laughs>